What I'd like to do is introduce you to one of the simplest ways of conducting hydroponics. This is a five gallon bucket, and you'll notice that this square, you can get actually any type of container, but this one I've selected for a particular reason, and it's for growing lettuce heads or particularly uh, small greens. Now the reason I selected this was for a few different reasons. One was this dark uh, color helps to keep light from penetrating through and create an allergy situation. The top is easy to get in and out of clamps, and the lid is easily removed. So the basic premise behind all this is if you were to have two inch net cups, a drill with a two inch or 51 millimeter hole saw, then you could easily convert this into a hydroponic system. Now, a typical head of lettuce will use around a gallon of water to go from seed to maturity. And so with a five gallon container, what I'm planning to do is to put four heads of lettuce on the top of that. Uh, what you'll find though is in a setup like this, as the plants begin to use the nutrient water and that water goes down farther and farther into the container, the roots will chase it down uh, so you can the water and plant food. When it gets down to about 10% uh, remaining, that will be the time that the salinity builds up enough that the plants will terminate. So my intention is that um, plants, these lettuce plants, will each have one gallon a piece. And when they get down, if I don't want to eat all four heads of lettuce in one day, they'll have about 10% of the solution remaining that they can extend their grow for uh, a few more days. And uh, then when it reaches 10%, you'll start to notice that the uh, leaves will start to change color a little bit. So the intention is that you don't want to have so many heads of lettuce that you can't eat them all. And for a family, you can probably uh, knock out growing uh, four heads of lettuce in about uh, every 30 to 45 days. So what I'd like to do to start with is take this lid and drill a hole in each of these four corners. On this drill bit, it has a inner drill uh, tip that extends a little bit. And so I'm gonna put the drill in a regular forward motion. Uh, when I get down to where these teeth start to make contact, I'm going to reverse the direction of the drill. And the reason for that is it gives me a cleaner hole through the uh, lid itself. There's another reason why I selected the five gallon container the uh, amount of nutrient that goes into that bucket, five gallons, you're talking about roughly 40 pounds. So if you are strong enough to, you can actually carry the bucket around once you fill it up with water. Otherwise, you could uh, bring water from the kitchen in a different container and fill it. The lid is nice from the standpoint that it fit across a typical trash can. And not only can I use this trash can for the purpose of being able to drill holes through, I can also take the lid off with the plants hanging to the root suspended underneath and set it on the trash can if I ever want to pick up the bucket and go clean it out or open it up and just take a look inside and just make sure that everything looks okay. But the way the system works, you shouldn't have to do that. Change in sound means that the teeth have contacted. I will reverse directions now. Now there's plastic shavings on the top from the drill. You'll notice that the chunk of plastic I just drilled out is stuck on the end of the drill. You want to make sure that uh, the drill is turned off when you go to pull that loose. And you can just dump the plastic shavings into the trash. And you can see that the hole is actually a fairly clean hole. The reason for that size would be the net cup choice that I have, the two inch. We'll drop it down into it with the lip fitting on top to keep the net cup from sliding all the way down. Once I have this completed, I could use a starting media, something like rock wool, and I could put seeds into that. Rock wool is kind of nice because it will wick water up uh, along with the plant food to the young plant, and because of the open structure, it doesn't get overly wet or overly dry. If I wanted to, I could take cuttings off a house plant. This is a cloning collar, two inch in size, also fits this style cup. And I could uh, trim that branch and open up the uh, foam insert on the top. It does have a slit on the side and I could spread that apart. I could put the stem of the cutting inside and stick that back in. You'll probably want the cutting uh, to go clear to the bottom. Uh, when you fill this up with water, the nutrient is gonna come up to about the bottom third of this net cup. Now that I have all four holes drilled into the lid, what I'd like to do is stop for a moment and talk about what I'm gonna put into this bucket. This would be nothing more than standard tap water or well water, depending on where you happen to live. The uh, water, once I put the lid on, 
we'll be up to about this point on the net cover. So one of the things that makes this simpler is to actually drop one of these net cups in when you put the lid on and then fill your water through one of the holes. You can actually observe how far up on the net cup it starts to get as you get closer to where you need to stop. The reason you don't want it to be all the way up to the top is the plants do need a little bit of an airspace. For food, you can use several different products that are out there on the market. I am using Dynagro 796, and this is a hydroponic nutrient, it's all in one. Full strength, they suggest that you use three teaspoons per gallon. But with non-circulating or passive hydroponics, you can actually get by, and it is strongly suggested that you use less. So if I were to use two teaspoons per gallon, five times two, ten, it'd be easy to measure out ten teaspoons with this common measuring cup that you find in the uh, kitchen department of several stores. This is what the nutrient looks like in the glass jar. It has a little bit of a tint to it. There's nothing in the bucket at the moment. There's really no magic to this. All I'm gonna do is pour it in. That way when I fill this with water, the churning action helps to mix the nutrient around. Now, if you've stayed with me for this long, there's really not that much that's left to this. I have the water and the food that I've placed inside the bucket. And one caution note was, uh, with this Craftsman bucket, when I went to lift it up with the water in it, the handle that went around snapped off, and I would not recommend uh, Craftsman buckets based on this. But uh, there's quite a lid that goes around the edge of this particular bucket. It is very sturdy material on the uh, sides as well as the lid, so uh, kind of a let down to have that snap. Uh, a lot of the buckets that you pick up, the five gallon round buckets, do have a, a little bit more substantial handle on those. And as mentioned, you may want to just leave this wherever you plan on growing, and then bring water in, maybe a gallon at a time, and pour into it. So what I have now, are the two inch net pots. And inside each one of these, I have a chunk of what is called uh, rock wool, and it has a little hole to put a seed into, and it's pushed all the way down into the bottom of that cup. I'm gonna drop one of those into each of the corners. And the only other thing that these plants will need would be a good light source. Now, I have grown plants in the windowsill with no problem, especially the, the uh, lettuce family, the herbs. However, for this particular grow, I'd like to have a little bit more supplementary light. What I picked up was an LED light. Uh, it does not cost a lot to run. As a matter of fact, this only pulls about 22 watts. And one of the things about it is it has a clamp on the end. So based on this thick uh, edge on the bucket, what I'm gonna do is just clamp it. right onto the edge of the bucket with the uh, gooseneck fittings. I'm going to adjust the lights. This particular light model uh, has a nice feature that it has a built-in uh, timer. I can set it for uh, 12 hours a day. And it's uh, really a nice feature because you don't have to get an additional lamp timer to set your lights. So if I were to turn this on, you can see that uh, I'm gonna be pulling probably about uh, close to 100 what's called PPFD, which is just a, a scientific way of saying how much light am I getting here on the top of the bucket. And so these uh, lettuce heads, as they grow up uh, and start to mature, they're gonna be in a zone that is providing them with right around 200 to 250 uh, PPFD, which is another way of saying, you know, that's enough light to make a salad. So you can see that this is a very simple setup, easy to replicate. I can put a description of the parts that I use at the bottom of this video. And the only thing that's really left is to take a pair of tweezers and put one or two seeds into the top of each of those uh, little net cups. If I use two seeds, I will clip off the weaker one. And what my goal is, is to only allow one plant per each of those uh, cups to grow to maturity. The reason that they're spaced out like that is because when the lettuce starts to grow, it'll have room to develop into a nice head of lettuce. And uh, that way you can repeat this cycle on a regular basis and have lots of fresh food integrated into your diet.